Hey folks, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography, and today's quick tip is separating your subject from the background. One of the ways to create three-dimensionality in a photograph is to uh, impart a sense of depth. And one of the things that brings depth into a photograph is the, our use of lights and darks. And how we use those and how we apply them in the photograph can create some separation between compositional elements as well as isolate your subject against the background. So let me show you just a, a quick tip and a couple of quick tricks to um, separate your subjects from the background. And most of these examples are going to be wildlife photographs because they're some of the most easiest to demonstrate. So let's jump in and take a look. All right, here we go. And this is a, a recent shot I took last week along the Oregon coast. I was leading a workshop out there and we went and visited a lighthouse that also happens to have a large bird sanctuary uh, on a sea stack just offshore. And there were some uh, mirrors and then these cormorants that were flying around and making nests and doing what birds do. So just down slope from us, I took this shot and I really like it. But what I find is, you know, tonally, this photograph is kind of flat, right? All of the exposure is, is really even, which is great from a, from a technical photography perspective. It lets me add lights and darks where I want. But right now, the subject is not really separated from the background. You know, and, and my subject here is really dark, the birds, and the background is fairly light. And I want to kind of flip that a little bit. I want the background to be darker than the, the, the birds, or at least stand out a little bit more. So I'd like to darken this background. One of the easiest ways to do this is in Lightroom. And, you know, I would think that I would go to go to the mask feature, then go to background. I select that and it selects everything other than the three birds, which isn't great. Now, see, I want I don't really want this foreground grass darkened. I kind of like it the way it is. If I do want to darken it, it won't be as dark as the background ocean. So I want to separate this grass from the ocean. So we'll go back in the masking tool. And what I want to do is separate or, or separate the grass from the ocean. So what I'd like to do is subtract a portion of this mask. And what I'd like to use is the linear gradient. And what I want to do is drag this up from the bottom and I want to I want to have a, a fade or a transition between the grass and the ocean. I don't want it to be an abrupt line of dark ocean and lighter grass. I want it to gradually fade. So that's kind of why I like the linear gradient. What I, I could have used a brush and just brushed all the grass in. That would have been an easy kind of sloppy way to do things. But the linear gradient gives me a really fine control over the angle of the subtraction as well as a fade from light to dark. So let's go ahead and live with that and see what happens. So now I can darken the ocean to kind of take it out visually from an, as an element in this photograph. And what I would like to do is maybe adjust this just a little bit more so less dark comes onto the grass. Let me go down here and you can see it fades from here to about right up into here. So I think that's a great solution for creating some of the separation. Now, you know, the next thing I would do with this is maybe use a little bit of my brush tool. Um, you know, paint in some of the, a little bit of the birds. 
if I wanted to I can go back in and what I want to do is add some light I'm just doing this quickly for example but let's just add some light into this that further helps differentiate the tonality of the birds from the tonality of the background all right here's another example this one was from uh, Katmai National Park up in Alaska we took a group up there photographed the grizzly bears and you know the same kind of principle applies that here the subject is darker than the background it does create separation but it's kind of inverse of what I would like I would like the subject to have a little bit more light than the background and so here I'm going to apply two different masks to this the first one is going to be to the subject selects the bear so let's go ahead and up the shadows a little bit we'll up the exposure a little bit really get that bear kind of looking nice and I may go back and adjust this once I deal with the background then likewise I'm going to select the background and in this case I want the whole background to be affected by this I don't need to do any subtractions in this whatsoever so let me go ahead and drop my exposure for that and I could even take this pretty extreme if I wanted to now the bear to go from that to that the bear stands out dramatically against the foliage and it's really clear what the subject is obviously but tonally it really draws our eyes right to the bear this was before and this is after and in just 15 seconds I was able to create this differentiation this separation between the subject and the background and jumping into a non-wildlife photograph, here's a, a dahlia photograph that I took last year during the Dahlia Festival. And again, the same kind of principles apply. I want to create separation between the dahlia flower and the background foliage. So let's see what Lightroom can do here if I just select the background. Looks like it did a pretty good job of this. So let's go ahead and drop the exposure just a little bit. Now, see how that flower just jumps? Might be a little bit too much. See how that flower just jumps off of there. And let's go ahead and select the subject. And what I might want to do is increase the saturation. I would go in and do some um, more fine-tuned edits. But what I want to do is just really, really kind of create this this sort of separation and let's bring up the highlights or the exposure just a smidge now it's really evident to go from yeah, this to this it helps your subject stand out against the background it helps people know where to look and it really kind of accentuates the purposefulness of why you took this photograph to have your subject really create this sort of separation between the subject and the background and not to mention um, imparting a little three-dimensionality into a two-dimensional image so there you go I hope that quick tip was helpful for you in how to create and why to create separation between your background and your subject again three-dimensionality uh, emphasis on your subject and just a more dynamic type of photograph when you employ this simple little trick to create that separation. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like, subscribe if you haven't done that and stay tuned for more wonderful videos. All right, take care folks. Bye-bye.